So if you're clicking on this video because you saw the title, you're upset, and you're about to make a comment, good, the clickbait title did its job, and you helped promote the video. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to start with a little journey back in time, uh, May 2018. I was in the National Guard Reserves, and I pretty much repair radios, and I fix them. I did everything communications, and we had a class, and an individual came down from the state capitol and talked to us about uh, HF communications. And uh, one part of the class, he brought up the fact that ham radio operators could make communication, uh, long-distance communication, using a metal fence. And that fascinated me. So I went home and I started doing a little research how to get into ham radio. And what do you know, I came across one of these guys right here, the Balfang. So this is actually the F8HP, but of course the popular radio at the time was the UV5R. And without getting too personal, uh, during these times I had probably two to four hundred dollars to my name. And uh, I wasn't a very responsible person. And with well, financially so obviously I just didn't have a lot of money in the bank I really wanted to get into this hobby uh, but like most people my age um, I didn't have a lot of money to put into it at the time I was like a college student it would kind of be stupid to spend several hundred dollars on a radio when I had maybe a few hundred to my name so I saw one of these Balfang UV 5 hours and I thought wow $30 I, I mean why not I can throw that in it seems like a little cool little radio and so that's what I did. And I didn't have my exam at the time. I was going. I was registered to take the class, but I wanted to go ahead and get the radio and to start listening, just to see what I could listen on, because these things have such a wide range, right? And I was completely fascinated at that point. The day I received this radio, I was completely just absorbed in the whole hobby. I really, I wanted to get into everything, and I couldn't because financially, I, I just wasn't there. But the BAL thing helped me get into a lot of digital communication, satellite work, and all types of cool things that a lot of people wouldn't even think about with one of these cheap Chinese radios. That kind of began my YouTube journey. I wanted to document my way into this hobby, and I wanted to make videos, and a lot of it was centered around the BAL thing because that's what I had. So if you look back on my channel two years ago, let's take a look and see what we've done with this BAL thing. And, and to see what it's done for me personally and probably others. So two years ago, I wrote a program to transmit web pages over PSK31. We did APRS, an automatic packet reporting system, with the Baofeng radio. I also decoded NOAA weather satellite images, which shared a community with the RTLSDR, but I did it with the Baofeng. I also received my first SSTV image via the ISS with the Baofeng and received the QSL card for it, too. I made many satellite contacts, and I even set up a APRS digipeter with this radio. Nevertheless, the first year my channel is covered in Baofeng. That's all it was, and that's because it got the job done. A lot of people want to make the argument that ham radio has to be an expensive hobby. And I'm going to go ahead and just say I object to that. With everything that I've done over the past few years with one of these $30 radios, I'm going to say it's what you make it. And one part that's fun about ham radio is the tinkering aspect and seeing what you can do. And that's what I loved about the little Baofeng radio. I love the fact that I could get outside with a $30 radio and a rubber duck antenna, and I knew the exact way to hold the antenna with the radio to make satellite contacts. And that's what was really exciting to me. Sure, you could have a 7500 right now. It'd be a lot easier. You have a lot more transport power, and uh, they receive a lot better. But not everybody has those funds. And the Baofeng let everybody like me, who knew they wanted to get into this hobby, have an outlet to do so. Had I got into it and I looked and there was maybe a $100 or $200 radio, uh, and that was the cheapest that I could find, I don't think I would be here talking to you today. One of the big arguments that I see against the Baofeng radio is that argument that people buy the radio, that want to get into ham radio, they see the Baofeng, they buy it, and they get so overwhelmed by the programming and the lack of how it works and they say okay this is kind of stupid and they just scrap it all together and move on with their lives and I think my channel itself is a testament that that is not the cause sure maybe a few people might get a hold of this thing and think that but in the end uh, if they've made the progress to get their technician exam then a $30 radio is not going to discourage them from getting into the, the hobby altogether 
if anything, it's going to help a bunch of people really get into it, dig into it, that don't have the funds like I did so they can get started and start making contacts. The Baofeng has become such a popular radio that even a lot of clubs uh, will give them away for free to individuals as long as they get their license. And this is a huge incentive. If you can tell somebody that they're going to get a free radio just for getting their ham license, um, I mean, sure, it's $30, but uh, speaking to hams, you know, the majority of people, they have a lot of money they dump into this hobby. Some of us don't. Those people are really going to be excited about getting that cheap little $30 radio, and especially when it comes to kids. Because you don't want to put, you don't want to give a, a 10 year old a 7300, but you can throw him a Baofeng and it won't hurt too much if he decides to chuck it, throw it over a cliff, drop it or in a mud puddle, whatever it be, because you're just out $30, right? So you can beat these things all to heck and they're going to be just fine. You know, I, halfway through my channel, I tried to start going to one of my local clubs and uh, I wanted to just kind of introduce myself and uh, they kind of talked about what I did. And at the time, I didn't know all of the animosity toward the Baofeng. So I started, I made the mistake, I started talking about my Baofeng and my satellite contacts I had made, and I had a few people scoff at me. And that's the first time I got a taste of what it, the, the issue here, really. Because some of these individuals that I've talked to in my time in radio don't even believe that I've made satellite contacts with the Baofeng radio, right? So there's just a lot of animosity toward this radio but it's done so much good to get people into the hobby. And a lot of those are even like preppers. Preppers buy these radios and they find out that they can't uh, legally transmit without the license. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of these people, I don't have the numbers, I don't have statistics, but I'm sure a lot of these people have started to pursue their amateur radio license and got into the hobby. Even myself, I bought the Baofeng radio because it was cheap and I just wanted something to talk on. Well, I didn't even have a grasp of the world of amateur radio. I didn't know that there was digital modes, you could transmit images, you could transmit GPS locations, that you can make uh, communication over satellite. I didn't know any of those things, and I ended up doing them over my bow thing. And I did upgrade along the line. I have my FT450 beside me here, and I've been running a YouTube channel over ham radio for the past two years. So it's really, it's, it was my gateway into the hobby. It's what got me into the world of amateur radio. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there that are feeling the same. Every week, I listen on my local repeater, and I hear somebody chime in. It's a new operator, and they say, hey, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm talking. I just bought this Baofeng radio. That's cool. You, you got into the hobby, and you're, you're using a Baofeng radio. That's fine. I'm sure these individuals will probably upgrade along the, the way. And if they're happy and content with their radios, and it does everything that they want them to do, why fuss? I guess my point in this video is... We need to give Baofeng just a little bit more credit. Uh, and I'm speaking mostly to uh, the hams out there that are kind of gatekeeping with the hobby. You know, the whole uh, no code shouldn't be in the, uh, in the hobby, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking to you individuals out there that are gatekeeping. This is the future of amateur radio. And this is something that we're going to have to look at and see how to use properly. There are going to be a lot of people that get into the hobby over the next few years and they've gotten into the hobby using these, these cheap Chinese radios. And sure, they're not the most premium radios. They don't have a warranty. Some of them may be a little noisy. But in the end, this is the future that we're looking at, and this is the direction we're taking. So we need to take those individuals and transform them into Baofeng users and kind of push them into the different directions of the hobby so they can make up their mind and uh, do, do more things. And, but if they're content with the radio, just let them be. But in the end, that's a, that's a gate to get into the hobby, and those individuals will do so much more once they see the world of it and see the possibilities. And that's completely fine. I just felt like I needed to make this video because there's a lot of people that I see gatekeeping online when it comes to these radios. And in the end, this is what we're looking at is the future. This is going to get so many young people into the hobby. It's going to get so many people that aren't financially dedicated to the hobby to put a little bit of cash into it, see what it's like, and then probably upgrade along the line. And so we need to help those individuals that are interested transition from the Baofeng to other radios or other aspects of the hobby and, uh, and not shun them away for using cheap radios. Uh, I'm a real advocate against gatekeeping in a hobby because when I've uh, been trying to get into the hobby myself, I was uh, there were people that tried to gatekeep me. 
And even to this day, over at YouTube, there's still people that, that really bash me for using some of the, the more uh, cheap uh, tech equipment that I do use. But in reality, that's what I have to do. And that's what a lot of individuals have to do. And uh, if you want the hobby to survive, those are the type of things that you have to embrace uh, for the longevity of, of the entire uh, community. So we need to make sure that we, uh, we don't shun those individuals away. We educate them and take them in and, uh, and embrace the future. And if that makes you upset, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I guess that's it for this video. I really appreciate the watch. I know it might be a little controversial. Uh, you know, some of the some of the old timers in the hobby really don't like these radios. Uh, but I figured I would throw it out there. And uh, I really appreciate everybody watching. So if you like the video, please make sure you hit the like button. If you dislike the video, make sure you hit the dislike button. All engagement is good engagement on YouTube. That's how the search algorithm works. Uh, and if you have any feedback, which I'm sure a lot of you do, let me know down below. Just shoot me a comment, and I'll see you in the next video. 73 to you.